welcome back to my channel where we start a lot of projects and never actually finish any. I've always looked at Eve online and thought to myself, that's gotta be highly automatable, right? And so if you look around online, yeah, there's a lot of bot technologies. What I'm about to show you, it's not supposed to be a bot that you can go and download. You can learn from this, however, right? We're gonna practice uh, some machine learning techniques, some Tesseract techniques and some classical software de uh, development techniques to extract data from a screenshot and then have the mouse move around and click things on screen. And we can build a very effective bot, right? So here's the bot flying around, um, mining ore, flying back to uh, a station, depositing the ore and flying back out and collecting more ore. So it's very, very possible. It's very reliable. So here is uh, an example of that implementation where we, let's say, mine until we're full. So first we're gonna get the cargo data. This is the easiest thing, right? We grab, I'm gonna go back to the screen here. We grab a rectangle here, we convert the image to black and white, and then we just calculate the number of white pickle, uh, pixels to black pixels. And from there, we can just measure percentage. How full is the cargo? So that's the easiest. The next most challenging is get survey scan data. This is where we want to draw a table around this table and then look at each individual cell and determine if the cell is populated with text or not. Basically any cell that has greater than 1% white pixels would mean that there's text inside. We don't actually have to extract the text, right? And so this is very performant, very reliable. You don't need any special machine learning techniques for that. The next technique that we have to implement is, and that's up here in this uh, find mining spot, is when we go and get location data. So get location data is we have to read this the, the table in the middle with the points of interest and we have to be able to read each point, right? So this is where we use Tesseract to, we draw a table around it, then we use Tesseract in each cell to transcribe what it sees on text, put it into a pandas data frame, and then we can leverage classical software development techniques to, uh, make decisions on what to click and where to navigate, right? Um, this is where it gets cool. We have two ML models in this solution. Oopsie. So we have a mining tool state uh, uh, model, right? And then we have a game state model. So game state, really simple. All the game state does is it tells us if we're on the login screen, it tells us if the servers have disconnected, it tells us if our ship is in flight in space, it tells us if we're in uh, a docking station, right? So that's what, they, that's what that tells us. Basically it gives us, it looks at the entire screen and tells us where do we go from here, right? Uh, and then finally the second model, which is really, really cool, and I'll just go to where I train it, and that's this guy right here. So this is cool because we're solving a temporal challenge. So this miner, right? I don't know what kind of miner this is. This miner has a pulsating glowing effect around it. This glowing effect, if you were just to grab a random screenshot of it, there's a chance you can grab this screen where you can't really conclude if this miner's running. And so what you have to do is you have to grab the screen 10 times, 10th of a second between each, and then from there, you stack the images on top of each other, and now you have a temporal representation of that miner over one second. Now you take that entire image, and then you train the classifier on that. And so here we have an example where the classifiers come to the conclusion that both are running in this case. In this case, the classifier is uh, suggested that no miners are running in this case, right? So we have a kind of a universal model builder. This is ripped straight from TensorFlow's website. Um, I did add this dropout node because I did, <laughs> this thing was overfitting like crazy, right? So threw in 50% of dropout in the classification stage and that seemed to do well. And we have a universal trainer here where you can just load in a bunch of images. Um, and then from there, you can just have it train up a classifier. And here's a confusion matrix of it, uh, of, of, of how the model's performing. And you can see across the five different classes and those classes are the minor tool state, both running invalid, minor one running, minor two running, and no miners running. You can see it does rather well classifying that. And so, those images that you saw there, it's doing this over and over and over about every 30 seconds. 
It's building this stack of images to get a temporal representation of the miners and then running the classifiers on that to make decisions on how what the bot should do next. So this is not a practical bot that you I mean, it's out on GitHub if you want to go learn from it, but this is not practical <laughs> by any means for you to use. Uh, it consumes your mouse. Your mouse is always moving. And also you got to have a bunch of static elements on the screen. You really can't see any of the gameplay. And you got to go and put like all these static windows to define your table space and where buttons are and all that kind of stuff. Then you got to build a, a bunch of custom POIs. And so I'm just demonstrating and honestly, honestly, all of this, you can build a model to then go and find all of these answers for you. And maybe, who knows, maybe that's the next step, right? We just have a model look at the screen and says, okay, here's where everything needs to be and this is where everything's at in it. But there's a substantial amount of configuration required to go and understand all the elements on the screen. And then from there, um, be able to uh, make decisions and read the screen, that kind of stuff. So this is just kind of a proof of concept that uh, a, a blend of classical software development and machine learning techniques and anything in between can fully automate a game um, just by grabbing the screen. There's no memory hacks. There's no DLL injection. This is just straight up. Take a lot of screenshots and just make decisions from those screenshots. So, uh, yeah, kind of one of the projects I've been working on. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>